Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. From the footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook here with Teron Davenport. And we're at the 2016 East-West Shrine Game. The West Practice Awards we're going to bring you now. Guys that have stood out all week long from the West team. And again, like we said before in the East video, it's not saying that other guys didn't have great weeks. Everyone had a great week here. These are all tremendous players. These are just some of the guys that we want to highlight for standout performances and a level of consistency all week long. So starting with the quarterback position, I'm going to go with Vernon Adams out of Oregon, yes. formerly of Eastern Washington. I thought Vernon Adams had a great week. He was the best quarterback, I thought, the entire week on both squads. I'm going to agree with you on that. One of the things I really like about him was, was how he was able to find passing lanes. He's not the biggest guy. He's, he's not 6'6". He, he's not even 6'2". But he did find a way to be able to deliver the football to his, his receivers, to the tight ends also. So I'll agree with you on Vernon Adams. Yeah, you look at the fact that they were trying to throw the seam a lot this week. And no one really had the arms to drive the football mm -hmm. but Adams. And that's something that, that caught the attention of June Jones, as he said so in our interview. So moving over to the running back position, who stood out to you from the backfield? Well, I'm going to have to go with Storm Woods out of Oregon State. Not as much because of how he ran the football, but how he was able to catch the football. It seemed like they really wanted to establish the screen game mm -hmm. also. And I guess that was because of the way some of the defensive linemen were able to dominate the team periods. So they were trying to go against that, that pass rush that they were getting. And one of the guys that they consistently threw the screen to was Storm Woods. So he would be the guy that stood out for me. What about you? I would say Daniel Lasko mm -hmm. because of his footwork. Just watching him in individual periods, yes. the footwork, the acceleration out of his cuts, the, the amount of taps he had per step it was just like wow he's impressive and it carried over to the team drills in 707 by him making guys miss and then accelerating down the field so i thought he had a great week of practice here at the east west shrine game looking at the receivers who stood out to you the most from the west team well, you know, there were a couple of receivers that I liked, but mm -hmm. I, I'm going to have to say Geronimo Allison. I just liked how smooth he was within his routes. He seemed like he has been running routes since he was 12 years old, man. He, he ran every route consistently, always where he needed to be, worked his way back to the football, caught every single pass with his hands. So he would be the guy that stood out for me. How about you? I would say Geronimo Allison as well, because again, just from the off the bus look, mm -hmm. he looked like a player off yes. the bus. He ran like a player off the bus. His routes were polished. His hands were soft. He caught with ease. He was calm out here. Didn't matter if there were 100 scouts or one scout or if football game plan was out here watching. Because, you know, we, we like to watch everybody, and people tend to shy away from, you know, our, our criticism and critiques in our analysis. So we give people more fear than NFL scouts do. You know, just throwing out, uh, just patting ourselves on the back right there. But all seriousness, he did have a great week. Yeah. He was my standout. Now, the tight end position, David Morgan. The second, I mm -hmm. thought out of Texas San Antonio did a great job. I, I like how he ran his routes. I like how he blocked. I thought he he showed good potential as an H back as a pro. I, I thought Morgan did a great job this week. What about you? I'm going to have to uh, go with the gentleman from Colorado State, Kevon Cartwright. And one of the things I liked in, in talking to him, he said he wanted to come in here and show that he could be an inline tight end, show that he could block. And he did that consistently as far as working with the coaches and, and trying to improve on, on that technique. So I, I think that was something that stood out to me. But also in the passing game. He told me about how, how often he used the jugs machine and how that helped him get those soft hands that, that he has. So just just like on the east, there was a tight end that, that really showed he has soft hands. On the west here, he, he definitely showed. Uh, the nice touchdown he caught in, in red zone period from Vernon Adams mm -hmm. on, the, on the corner route to kind of end the period on a positive note. So he would be the guy that stood out for me. Offensive line, I look at one player in particular and one player only, Ted Karras out of Illinois. I mean, we saw him dominate... <laughs> One on ones, nine on sevens, team period. He had probably the best week out of any offensive lineman, I thought, east or west. Yeah, I mean, right away he showed. <laughs> I really like how he was able to keep his base. You weren't able to, to push him over. 
they they pulled him and he showed that he could he could move on, on you know on, on runs to the outside mm -hmm. when, when they pull him for that I have to agree with you Karras definitely stood out for me as well now you look at the defensive line and I'm going this was tough because there were two guys that I thought had really good weeks but one guy in particular just like the offensive line of the E squad I look at Ibuka on your meta Finally got his name right out That's of all week. Job. That's a good job right there, right? <laughs> out of Manitoba. You talk about a guy 6'3", 6'4", 300 pounds. Strong. Built like Leroy Glover. Just a wide body. Mm -hmm. Built like a creative player in John Madden football. <laughs> but he was so strong. He could play in. He could play tackle. I thought he did a great job showing that, hey, the CIS is up to par now. You know, they've done a great job. We saw a guy from Laval, which is an outstanding program. They're the Alabama of CIS, and Manitoba has tremendous speed and athleticism. So to see a strong guy like Onyemeta did a great job this week, and he really dominated the one-on-one -on -one periods uh, this week on the West team. Who's a D lineman that stood out to you? Well, I'm glad you picked him out, so you could be the one that had to pronounce <laughs> that. But, you, you know, at the same time, there was another defensive lineman who has a name that's kind of difficult to pronounce, and that's Azizia, too. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that stood out for me. And the thing that really stood out to me was how he set the tone. If you remember the first couple of No, we good. That's we the good. hands. You saw that. He still saw, has it. Still has it. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, the first couple practices were kind of dead leading into team period and the defense the defensive line specifically dominated initially in team period and mm -hmm. one of the guys to really get it going was Shatu. he talked trash to everybody <laughs> he did an excellent job of getting pressure they couldn't block him in team so he had to be the guy that stood out to me just because he was able to play a couple different positions as well. So that's my guy on the defensive line. I look at the linebackers, the second level, Devondre Coleman. I'm sorry, Campbell, I'm sorry, out of Minnesota. 6'5", yeah. 249. He looks the part. He's a tall guy, long arms. Like you said, he was specifically created by God to set the edge. Yeah. you know, <laughs> And that's what I wanted to see him do. He did a good job in that. I thought there were times where he probably could have made a better play. But I like what I saw from him. And I thought he had a really good week proving that size isn't a skill he has the athleticism that makes his size a threat I think that's why I really like what he did this week I can't disagree with you on that uh, I think that he definitely is a guy that stood out one of the other guys he's not uh, of the same stature mm -hmm. but athleticism it definitely showed with him and that's uh, Travis Feeney out, out of Washington mm -hmm. and initially he didn't really stand out but just his last practice uh, yesterday on uh, Wednesday the, the things that he was able to do. He had two interceptions. He picked up a fumble and, and ran it. He could probably still be running mm -hmm. and them not they wouldn't be able to catch him right now. So he would be the guy that, that stood out to me outside of the linebacker that you mentioned. Yeah, looking at the secondary, I look at Mike Jordan. That must suck for him. You know, yeah, so right. <laughs> Mike Jordan out of Missouri <laughs> Western, a Division II program, the Griffins. We know a lot about football, uh, about uh, D2 football and D3 football here at Football Game Plan, but Minnesota Western, the Griffins, he did a great job all week long. I thought his technique was solid. He got great ball skills. He finds the football and gets his hands on it. To me, he had a great week at, of practice showcasing himself at the higher level of competition. Yeah, just to kind of piggyback off of that, he made a play that one of the my guys uh, out of the secondary was able to, to intercept, mm -hmm. and that's Ken, Ken Crawley out of Colorado. He Jordan uh, Jordan Dangerfield had, had a, a post route, and he was able to knock it knock it away. And Crawley came down with it for one of his two interceptions that day. And and he would be the guy that stood out to me just because he was never out of position. He excelled in one on ones as well. So I would have to say the Colorado uh, defensive corner. Now let's look at offensive MVP for the West team. For me, I'm going to say it was Vernon Adams. Quarterback coming out, doing his thing. You want to see quarterback shine in these all-star games, and I think this year we it was tough to find. You had to really look and find guys to really stand out consistently. And contrary to popular belief, Vernon Adams was the best quarterback out here, and he proved it day in, day out. I think we're sharing a brain here because mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to have to say him as well. You mentioned how he was the only one able to push the ball to the seam routes, and, and it's surprising because you had a couple other quarterbacks that coming in, well, specifically one that you thought would be able to do that if you just went by what you read. But we saw a little bit different, and he, he just showed it. And I think also 
with the pressure that was coming, he was able to make a couple guys miss, and, and if the play wasn't there, his throw wasn't there, he was able to run. And he really showed that he could be a playmaker. I think he was the offensive MVP. It's the also. art of quarterbacking. Now, defensive MVP, I'm going back up north. I got my passport. Ibuka on your meta from Manitoba <laughs> once again. Tremendous performance. And I almost went with a guy in uh, Tyrone Holmes out mm -hmm. of Montana. I thought he did a great job. He was athletic, great burst off the ball. But on your meta and what he brought to the table from a strength perspective, I thought it just showed out constantly this week, especially in inside drills. Yeah, I'm going to go back to Chatu, Aziz Chatu out of Stanford. I think he was the guy that, that really, again, he set the tone. And whenever they needed to get going, his talking would, would, would get that defense going. So he would have to be the guy for me. Now, biggest surprise, and we're talking about just overall from the East-West Shrine game, what was your biggest surprise this week from the West team? Uh, I want to say Allison, the the wide receiver, Geronimo mm -hmm. Allison. He definitely stood out. Just I knew nothing about him, and uh, I definitely I'm going to have to go back and, and watch him. But I think the biggest surprise for me was was Nate Suffield. Okay, coming in with him being a, the big six six quarterback that he is. A lot of times you associate a big arm with that, and unfortunately, I don't know if it was a bad week for him or what, but. Just the way he threw the football would be the biggest surprise for me. For me, the biggest surprise was seeing how well guys that are able to come out and coach very well. I have to mm. give props to the coaching staff. Yes. June Jones, Chris Miller, Steve Broussard. You look at, look at uh, Terrence, Terrence Mathis, Mathis, Jerry Glanville. It's almost like the 91 Falcons are back right. in the black. You know, <laughs> So it's like to see these guys come out here and do their thing. Once again, it's like getting the band back together. And, and these guys, we didn't see mental, uh, a lot of mental mistakes out here. Guys grasped the system. Mm -hmm. You know, they were aggressive. They played fast. All of which is, if you draw it to the T, you know, from the run and shoot to the grits blitz, all that stuff like that from Glanville to Mouse Davis to June Jones, it, it was on, on showcase this week. I, that was the biggest surprise to see how well these guys could get together, pick it up, and put together an excellent game plan. And each team did a, a great job as well. But I was just impressed by because of these guys having experience playing together and working under Jerry Glanville at some point, it was to showcase that this weekend. I thought they did a great job. Good point. I definitely agree on that. Now, when you look at a guy that's supposed to get more tape, we talk about this all the time, more tape. I got to go back and take a look at this guy. It happened to me last year, a personal story, uh, from the FCS championship game. North Dakota State versus Illinois State. This young tight end was making plays all game long. A senior tight end in James O'Shaughnessy. I wrote down my, in my notes. I got to go back and take a look at this guy's game to see how he can play. Gave him a second round grade. He ended up getting drafted in the fifth round by Kansas City. So it's a, you go back, you see things that you didn't see before, and guys surprise you. So who's your more tape guy for the West team? Well, it's going to have to be Geronimo Allison. After that first practice, what did I say? Hey, I need I need some of that 2014 tape. Mm -hmm. I need to, some of the 15 also. I gave you specific games and I already watched a couple of them. So just being honest, it would have to be Allison. I want to see how smooth he is in football games, see if just what we saw in practice transfers to game day. And, and a couple of the ones I watched, it definitely did. Yeah, and I'm going to go back and take more looks at Tyrone Holmes out mm -hmm. of Montana. I think when you look at – the edge rushers last year was Zach Wegeman. They had him, and he was supposed to be a big-name guy. And they had a guy on the interior, Tonga Takei, was an outstanding uh, defensive lineman. Holmes comes on the scene this year and has double-digit sacks and was just a, a man possessed. So I want to go back and see how many of those sacks were his and how many of those pressures that he didn't convert Where's the, the fine line? Because if you have 22 sacks, I know on paper it's 22 sacks. Right. But let's see how much of that was you and how much. But I think he he was a great player. But I just want to see where he he lies and how much of that number is a true number. But I do think he's a tremendous player. I'm excited to break down a lot of these guys this year in the 2016 for the 2016 NFL draft. So for Tehran, I'm Emory Hunt. This has been a great week of practice here at the 2016 East-West Shrine game. The game is on Saturday on NFL Network at 4 p.m. Eastern time. You can find it there. So to follow Teron on Twitter, hit him up at tdavenport underscore NFL. I'm at FBall Game Plan. Great week here. Follow all of our interviews, notes, recaps on the East-West Shrine game at footballgameplan.com slash draft.